Sometimes it's easier just to give in, I guess. Hey, John, at least say hi. At least, at least say hi. He has this weird obsession with my nose holes today. It's been about three minutes and he's still not done. He's still not done. Okay, now he's done. Do you mind? Do you mind? Jeez. Oh my gosh. Ugh. Get out of my ear. Get out of here. Would you at least say hi to your friends? Hey, 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 you, Ja. This is not why I have you in the house. I, I don't need this all the time. Okay, guys, well, it's been a rainy day. I have a lot to do today, and uh, today is the college championships for football, so I'm going to go hang out and watch that with Kevin. But I think what I'm going to do today is, uh, if you guys remember last week, I went for a walk because I wanted to scout a place and see what it was, like what it looked like now. I'm going to do that one today. So, we're entering the world of guard dog security today. Good morning, guys. Days with Jordan the Lion. We're about to get our day started, but I just wanted to tell you, I know at the end of last year that I promised that we were going to be doing a road trip. Um, this month and it's still gonna happen. It's just not gonna happen this coming weekend like it was supposed to It's actually gonna be postponed until the end of the month because my friend Carrie and I are doing this together We've, we've done this trip the same trip uh, a few years ago, and we had a blast so We're gonna do it again, but for both of our schedules. It's just easier for us to go at the end of the month um, it's easier for me to find somebody to watch jaw because of this particular weekend and she has kids and a husband or whatever and actually fun little tidbit I was the officiator of their wedding they asked me to become an ordained minister to perform their ceremony because they both just, I guess they decided, it was funny, when they sat down to talk about it, she said, we sat down, we were like, we should talk about who's going to officiate it, and we both said you as our first choice, so I had to do it, and uh, so that's how, we've known each other for at least 10 years now. This trip is going to be a blast, but it's just going to be a few months, or a few weeks later, so John and I are going to suit him up in his little, uh, harness and he and I are going to walk off and do a really interesting place today because if you've ever seen Armed and Dangerous starring John Candy, Eugene Levy, and Meg Ryan, Frank Dooley was John Candy and we're going to Frank Dooley's house today as well as some other parts tonight that were filmed in the neighborhood. But I know you guys will love this. If This is like one of those really understated John Candy movies. He's not really known for this movie but every time I watch it I can't understand why and it's you know, two veterans of SCTV, so they had great chemistry together, Eugene Levy and uh, and John Candy. But what's weird is, after this, I never really saw Eugene Levy in much. And then he had, like, all of a sudden he came back out in American Pie, like, years and years later, and had a total rebirth of a career, which is awesome. But this is going to be fun, because some of my favorite scenes in the movie were filmed at uh, Frank Dooley's house. Well, that little Christmas tree that was sitting there is gone now. And they're doing something over here. Well, unfortunately, this is one of those movies I would have loved to have done all the locations, but there's so many places that were in the movie, they're gone now. Like, uh, the, in fact, the opening shot where we see Frank Dooley helping the girl get her cat out of the tree, that house is still there, but the tree, they've dug the tree out and put a small tree in there, so the one that he climbed in was in and afraid to get down, you, it's not even there anymore. The building that they used for, uh, for the IMOC guard... Guard dog security. That building has been demolished and something else has been built there. And Michael Carlino's mansion. I'd love to go do that one, but that's the Beverly Hillbillies mansion. And unfortunately, the way you see it in Beverly Hillbillies and the way you see it in Armed and Dangerous, where it's this see through gate and it opens up and you can um, actually see the, uh, the mansion from inside, it's not that way. They've changed the whole entrance and now it's a really high, like, shrubbery wall so you can't even see it and they've they've changed the entrance the driveway entrance to like another side of the property so can't do that one either but what we can do are the uh the porno theater that the two guys go into to hide out and they go in the uh the peep show booth we can go to uh 
where Frank sees the break-in, where they're stealing the uh, stereos, and we're going to Frank's house. Well, there it is. In the movie, it was actually, where all the white was, it was white, and where all the blue was, it was yellow. But that was it, that was Frank Dooley's house. Now, the first thing that we actually see out of this house is you see, uh, you see Frank in his motorcycle gear, his leather jacket and everything, and he's, uh, he's loading his gun in the living room. And I'm guessing, I can't really see a chimney, but you kind of see the chimney fireplace in the shot. But uh, the more magical parts happen actually back there. Because back here in this shed, it is actually, and I love the flamingos, that's awesome. Back in that shed is actually where uh, we see Frank unveil his motorcycle. And uh, hops on it and tries to get it started, but it won't start. So, what he ends up doing is we see him uh, start walking it down this sidewalk right here. And uh, when he does that, you can actually see this building in the background. I think it's actually that building. You see that in the background as he's wheeling out. But he comes walking the motorcycle right out here. And then you see him uh, pull it out into the street. And you see that part of the street. Then we actually see him walking it this direction for quite a ways. And then he makes a stop and he says one more chance. He hops on it, jumps up. And that motorcycle fires up like a rocket. And the next shot we see is actually Frank on top of the motorcycle riding off down this street, yelling, let's kick some ass! What a great movie. Isn't that just so cool to think that a legend, I mean an absolute SCTV comedy legend, I mean there's, it's hard pressed to find a movie that he wasn't phenomenal in. Just to see him walking that motorcycle out down this driveway, and out into the street. Imagine living in the neighborhood seeing that. Especially the way he was dressed. It's pretty cool. I mean, John Candy really did no wrong when it came to being on TV and in films. And uh, my friend Joey actually mentioned one time, and it's so true, he said, can you imagine being Steve Martin or any of these other actors that worked with him? You're signing on to do a picture, you're reading the script and you're going, wait a minute. I gotta be the straight guy like, imagine how hard, as a great comedian, that would be to be the straight guy with John Candy, knowing that John Candy was going to be the, the highlight of this thing. But there it is. Frank Dooley's house. From Armed and Dangerous. You know, one of the other great things, you know, outside of the fact that you have a movie starring John Candy, Eugene Levy, my uh, childhood crush, Meg Ryan, you had the great Robert Loja, but you also had a really young Tom Tiny Lister Jr. who wrestling fans will know eventually became Zeus in the Macho Man and Zeus versus Paul Hogan and uh, Brutus the Barber Beefcake wrestling matches. But you also had a phenomenal soundtrack by Maurice White. Maurice White was the music director on that. And we all know who Maurice White was, don't we? Yeah. Check out that hot rod. That is awesome. All right, guys, day one of the jacket I should have been wearing all along, but I just mentally talked myself out of it. Gotta go to the doctor now. I'll show you guys why I'm going to the doctor right now, actually. So, do you see that big bump on my finger? All of a sudden, one day, I looked down at my finger, and I saw that, and I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a tumor, 
a um, cyst, a calcium deposit. I don't know what it is. It doesn't really hurt unless I'm trying to carry like a bag or something on that. But it's, it's just, it bulges out and I don't know what it is. So I don't really know who to go talk about something like this. So I'm just going to go to the, my primary like general practitioner and see if maybe it's like fluid or something. I don't know. Maybe they'll have an idea. Well, they tried to take my pulse with that thing, but it wouldn't work. The strap kept busting off my arm, so they had to take it manually with another one. Well, I wish I had good news to report, but actually I don't. I don't have terrible news that I know of yet, but they, uh, <clears throat> he checked over my hand and he seemed pretty alarmed because that bump is, um, it's like firm. It's like what they called a mass. So, and my dad got a tumor when he was my age. So they're sending me to a specialist. Uh, they took blood work. Uh, they're sending me to get an x-ray and they're sending me to a hand specialist and I don't know, we'll see what happens. I'm not going to worry about it, to be honest. I've never been, uh, I've never been afraid of this kind of stuff, to be honest. I don't, I think it's because my dad had this stuff when I was so young that I just don't even, I just feel like whatever happens, happens. Watching some hee-haw pre-game. Alabama is one intense team, I'll say that. All right, we just got home. I got some uh, mail. got that light that I ordered, which is pretty awesome. And uh, now I'll have to go out and finish the uh, last parts of the vlog. Kevin actually looked at my finger, and he, you know what he thought it was? He thinks it's a, uh, he said what's called a uh, Bible blister. He thinks that might be what it is. So I don't know. We'll have to find out. I looked uh, online what a Bible blister was, and it says that a, they most commonly occur during where, near your joints, on your wrist, or your fingers. So that would be synonymous with that. So we'll see. Well, this is pretty amazing. Clemson had come back against all odds from being down the whole game. We're winning 28-24, and then Alabama just scored again with two minutes left in the game. Look at that. That is absolutely unreal. 14 seconds left and they're within 10 yards. Anything can happen now. Oh my god, with one second left, Clemson scored a touchdown and won. I don't believe what I just saw. Oh my, wow. And we also get a shot of Frank's car. Frank's cock car driving past here when he's out on patrol early on in the film. And right here is actually where, uh, towards the beginning of the movie, that Frank would have driven by the electronic store and see if there was, there was a break in. And you can match it up by the, uh, the rectangle there. You, there would have been those three dot things right there, four things, the little uh, spout. Right here's where we would have driven by and he would have went around the corner to the um, the alleyway in there and that's where he would have saw the other officers stealing the TVs that he would be framed for. So let's go check out that alley. And this is actually the alleyway that, uh, that Frank would have driven down to uh, check out what was going on because you can see that big kind of doorway area over there. You can see that in his shot when he's driving through. And he actually would have, when he pulls up and stops the car, the pile of trash and everything would have been right over in here. It would have been right here. Would have been where the uh, the other officer came walking out and dove into the pile of trash. That's far enough. And they would have told Frank to take the TV. 
then you would have seen all the officers come driving up this alleyway. And they think Frank was the one robbing the building. Frank Dooley really can't catch a break in this one. Well, right here's the view that you would have gotten of the, uh, the two police officers flying around the corner to come up here and find Norman and Frank. And then this actually was the, uh, this was the triple X porno store that they go in and hide out in. This would have been uh, where they hide out in the uh, the strip booths and Frank asked Norman for a quarter. And uh, that's where they run into the two guys that they end up switching clothes with. And they end up coming out of here and get confronted by the guys that, uh, that end up making Frank lose his job at the beginning of the movie. Right here's where we would have seen the guys confronted by the two cops. And uh, Frank would have said, oh, he's cute. And the guys would have told him to beat it, and they would have taken off walk in this direction. So right here is where we would have seen uh, Frank and Norman walking off in their new clothes. Hilarious. All right, let's go ahead and do the uh, the drawing for the Vlog 150 sunglasses, the Mae West sunglasses. <laughs> and the winner is my mom. Congratulations, mom. And she actually played it fair and square. She actually put the answer in the uh, the, the comments just like everybody else. Well, congratulations. You won't have to email me your address. I actually know it. So who would have ever thought? What an odd... Well, congratulations, Mom. There you go. You get my sunglasses. <laughs>